Oh, and unfortunately, the Astros lost this game 3-2 to two to the Red Sox after stealing their catcher from them. But I guess it wasn't stealing because the Astros gave up two pretty good prospects. We actually know the prospects now. And this is the third po- uh, podcast of the day. And uh, right before the show, there was some more breaking news. Mark Berman, of all people, broke that um, actually the Astros have made another trade. And we're going to talk about this and more on this edition of the Locked on Astros podcast that starts now. Hello and welcome to Locked on Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talks Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can we find you at? They can find me at HTown Wheelhouse on Twitter and Instagram at Astros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. Thank you for making Locked on Astros podcast your first listen today Uh, and every day, every hour. It seems like we've been doing these podcasts. Uh, We've had two trades today. We did a um, because Ken Rosenthal uh, said something yesterday. And but guys, please subscribe to us on YouTube. Our numbers are going up, but just subscribe to us. Give us a like and go and listen to us on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Check out the Locked On Astros podcast. And yes, right as the game was ending, Mark Berman, of all people, and the guy who meets people at the airport, he had breaking news. And this is something that I kind of uh, suggested, not necessarily this deal, but I suggested that Jake Odorizzi was likely on the move. I mean, which pitcher would you rather trade? I would think it would be the guy um, in Jake Odorizzi, and he is on the move to Atlanta. John, uh, sorry, Jeff Passan kind of confirmed that he was being traded to the Braves in exchange for Will Smith, not Chris Rock's um, enemy and not the Dodgers catcher, Will Smith, but the lefty reliever for the Braves who actually has a team option for next season. He's uh, also a former closer, left-handed reliever. He's not having a great season, but he's still a left-handed reliever. He is, uh, how old is he? He is uh, 33 years old, and he's um, on this on the season, he's 0-1 with a 4.38 ERA. He has 37 strikeouts and 41 games. He has five saves, a 1.51 whip. Uh, he's no longer the closer. Um, I think they got Kinley Jansen over there. So he was the, no longer uh, when Jansen was on the IL, he was the closer for a little bit. But other than that, he is a lefty reliever. He is a high leverage lefty reliever. I know we'll talk about his splits in a second, but I want to hear about what you have to say about this. Well, you know, I'm really kind of surprised that Odorizzi got moved. I didn't think you would be able to move him maybe because of his contract. I mean, but then again, his last start, he had eight strikeouts. It was the most he had had in the game this year. When he's good, he's good. When he's not, he's not. And Odorizzi came back, I think, pretty successfully. Um, Two out of his three starts, or maybe he's two and two, or I don't know. Basically, he is a guy that the Braves didn't use. And my first thought was, why couldn't we get Charlie Morton for him, right? (laughs) Because I, I, I saw Charlie Morton kind of getting shelled the other day, and I was like, you know what? Let's take him. He's not looking good. We can turn him back into the pitcher he was. But, you know, Will Smith, World Series experience, postseason experience, had that right. long run with the Braves last year, the, as painful as it was for us to watch. Everybody's been clamoring for a left-handed reliever. Now that we got a left-handed reliever, people are complaining, no, not that guy. And it, it's like you, you can't – like I don't know what people want. I, I think – I think they want something to want something, but then when it's not exactly what they wanted, they have buyer's remorse. The bottom line is this. You have a club that everybody was criticizing eight hours ago. They're doing nothing. Click isn't making a team better. Click is cheap. 
Crane is cheap, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, three trades, boom, boom, boom. I don't like the moves. Why is he making this move? And it's like, if he does something, people criticize him. If he doesn't do something, people criticize him. What y'all have to realize and what I have to realize, what Eric has to realize, is I promise you, even if you know baseball, these executives, James Click, know what they're doing a lot more than we do. They're not paying you and me. They're paying Mr. Click. And Mr. Click, I trust that he's making the right moves. Will Smith, I think, is a good move. You weren't going to pay Odo Rizzi next year, even if he met his minimum inning or his innings goal and all that stuff. And that gets you off the hook for his contract for next year. That saves you some money, um, I believe. And Will Smith, I think he's a piece. You know, um, he has a strikeout rate of 20% for a ball rate of 30, 34.3%. He does have a minus 0.5 war, but overall his totals, he has a 6.4 war. And so I think they're going off his history and what he's done versus what he's doing recently. What have we done to pitchers that have come over here and struggled? Hector Neres, Charlie Morton, I keep going down the list. We turn them to better pitchers. Will Seth will hit his stride. Once he gets tuned in to locked on it, I'm to to the Astros baseball club. <laughs> to locked in Astros, yeah, yeah, to yeah, locked definitely. Astros, when he right. tunes in locked in Astros, he's definitely going to become a better pitcher. But against right-handed batters, uh, Will Smith is allowing a 250 batting average with an 801 uh, OPS, and uh, he's allowed five home runs um, on the year. Uh, 23 hits and struck out 24 batters against left-handed hitters. He's allowed a 222 batting average with a 996 OPS, uh, allowed two homers and 12 hits. Uh, so he's mostly faced um, a lot of right-handed hitters, but uh, he's um, faced the so 92 at bats against righties, 54 against lefties. So uh, that that was the situation there. But uh, I think that Dusty Baker will find the right the right times to use him, and I think that Dusty Baker has his lefty uh, yes. So um, I would say uh, in that situation, I think that this is what the Astros needed to do. And this, uh, they got their lefty reliever. I don't know. Um, I know Brian McTaggart before the game kind of tweeted out that the Astros have been all gun ho for Gregory Soto of the Tigers, but I don't know if this takes them out of the running for them. Cause why do you need to trade for two lefties? Uh, so I, I don't think, I don't know what that means, but it was so funny that they had just interviewed James click like about 15 minutes before this trade went down that it's like James click was like, yeah, I haven't been getting a lot of sleep lately, so I'm a little tired. And then all of a sudden, 15 minutes later, uh, this whole Will Smith trade, uh, apparently went down. Well, he, well, he did say, I have to go back to the phone. I'm, I'm going to have to go back on the phone and keep making calls. They've got another move. That's going to happen. They've got another move that is in the hopper and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a bat. I'm pretty sure they're going to bring a bat I mean, if you look at some of the ABs tonight, you look at some of the struggles offensively, they still could use an extra bat. I'm wondering if that's in a center fielder. I'm wondering if that's like an Ian Happ, if that's a Michael Taylor. I don't know. I'm just saying don't be surprised if they get another bat before the deadline. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people speculate that uh, Will Smith has a, a $13 million um, team option for next year. And uh, they've speculated that if he struggles this year, the Astros are kind of a cheap organization at times, and they, they may not want to spend that money on a lefty reliever who struggles. So they may just do the $1 million uh, buyout for next season. But I, I think the opposite. If he, bec if he comes over and he is a good reliever, I think this is a way to, to have him for not just this season, for next season. And Will Smith has a history of being a closer. I think this is a good move for Houston. And I think it that overall it's a good way to build your rotation, just like building your cabinet full of belt bars. When you get hungry, when you got to get um, the, the Yankees out, you got to get the right lefty, the right belt bar. So let's talk about belt bar. Yeah, if you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. You ready? 
delicious, indulgent cookie dough. Covered in chocolate, that's right, Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to your new favorite cookie dough chunk puff and have a light that has a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, plus it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories, and they are a whopping 15 grams of protein in each bar. Run to Built.com to snag a box for you and the family. It will be the perfect treat, or you can find a really good hiding place and just hoard them for yourself. Like all Built Bars, the new cookie dough chunk puff is covered in 100% real chocolate. That means it's healthy and tasty. Chocolate-covered cookie dough. And let me tell you, it is amazing. This collagen protein that it's filled with helps your body absorb it more efficiently so you can be on the go faster. So go to Built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 50% off your order. It's a promo code LOCKED15 to get Built Bars at Built.com. Alrighty, I know this Saturday we're planning on doing a uh, a watch party from uh, Hooters and NASA. Great place to watch some baseball. So tell us about Hooters. Yes, Hooters of NASA is the place you want to go to hang out to watch all your Astros games. It's where we hang out. We love um, going there. You've got the world famous Hooters girls. You've got great brews on tap. You've got 15 different sauces. I mean, for me, I like the maple chipotle. I know Eric likes the teriyaki um, chicken tenders. And there's so many more things there to order. Hooters NASA gets involved with the Astros, too. They've They've been known to take trips to games where you can go to the games with your friends and with the Hooters girls, and they have more trips that are going to be planned. This Saturday, October 6th, the Houston Astros play the Guardians. The official time for the game is 510. It's an away game. We will start a live prod- broadcast at 430 from the restaurant. Come hang out with us. Come be in the background, holler and cheer for us. When you hear us on the show, you'll be like, hey, that was me. On the show live, you'll get to hang out with us. We are giving away um, some credits for simpleseats.com for, so you can purchase tickets. We're also giving away a couple pairs of Astros tickets to future games. We're also giving away Hooters gift cards, all kinds of stuff. But if you're not there for this Saturday and during the week, they have Happy Owl specials from 3 to 6, Legendary Aritas, your favorite beers on tap, and so much more. They have specials each week. They have UFC fights, whatever it is you want. So this is where you're going to go, I-45 South, exit FM-528 for Great Wings. They're located in the NASA Value Shopping Center south of Baybrook Mall in Webster, Texas. Come see them for lunch after work, dinner, or celebrate, or August 6th when myself and Eric Van Heisman will be there live. Meet us, greet us, take some pictures, and we will have a lot of fun cheering on the Astros to another victory. Hooters of NASA, it's the place to hang out. Alrighty, uh, there's a lot of people in this chat right here that are not too um, big fans of Jeremy Pena right now. I know he <laughs> struck out with in a big situation today, but he is a rookie. He's probably hitting that rookie wall right about now, and I'm not too worried about him in the long haul. I think that he, the Astros are in good hands with him, but yeah, he has been struggling a lot lately. The Astros... Um, have seen Kyle Tucker struggle a little bit lately. And that's why the Astros are making these moves. They're making these moves because uh, they can't stand uh, to have a a lot of these guys who they've counted on. They've counted on Tucker a lot this year. Jeremy Pena, they've counted on. And now all of a sudden they've gone ice cold. And then you have uh, Bregman who's going on paternity list for three days. Uh, I guess two days now because uh, he already missed one game. Right. And then Martin Maldonado has been hitting good in July, but you can't count on him uh, for it to be uh, hitting for too long. And so uh, the Astros are making moves because you can never assume that people are going to hit in October. And so uh, let's go ahead and kind of move away from Will Smith uh, for a little bit. But I think this is a great move. Jake Odorizzi was a nice luxury on this team. But if uh, Lance McCullers is ready to come back on a rotation, I would hate to have Odorizzi kind of standing in a way. And this could be a chance for Hunter Brown to uh, get his foot in the door at some point because Odorizzi is not there blocking away. Now, you know, I I think Taylor Jones is just Bregman comes up. I was really hoping, really hoping that Taylor Jones would tie it up and 
nearly he got out in front of a of a pitch and, and he all i mean good lord if if he could have hit a tank and tied it up right if he could yeah. have hit something out it would have been great it, it would have just been awesome and so um at the end of the day taylor jones is going to fill that spot as admirably as he can Pena, give him a chance give him Give him a little bit of room. He's struggling right now. He did strike out a lot when he was in minor leagues. That is something that they're still working on. That strikeout rate was kind of high when he was called up. I know from last year he had the hand injury in the shortened season. So he doesn't have a ton of experience under his belt. Everything will be fine with him. Let things work out. He's got a team of veterans and champions around him. So I think they'll be fine. Today, I didn't like the way that... Javier is pitching. It's almost like he wasn't really hitting hitting the zone very well on his pitches. What was he? Well, I mean, he was – What? who did I say? Javier. Okay. Well, Garcia, sorry. He had 99 pitches. He threw 65 for strikes. He did have five strikeouts. He only had one walk. But it just didn't seem like he was placing the ball well. It, it, it looked like they were, they were getting too many fly balls off of him. I know they only got six hits. But all the hits were deep and far, and I'm surprised he only gave up one home run in the game because he was pitching a contact a little too much. You know, Javier, Javier, gosh, I I keep saying Javier, Luis Garcia, when he's on, he's on. And gosh, I'm so tired. This is our fourth show in two days, and I'm I'm having a hard time. This uh, is our fifth podcast in 24 hours, so yes. Fifth podcast, okay, yeah. And so... The bottom line is this. It's a 3-2 to two loss. Big deal. Boston's back to 500. Who cares? We're still atop the West. The Mariners, I believe, lost today, so they didn't gain any ground. I believe Castillo is facing Cole on Wednesday. Um, and I believe on Tuesday, if you're listening on Tuesday, if you go to the Sugarland game, a little off topic, but Dallas Keuchel's throwing to Lance McCullers. And Lance McCullers said Dallas Keuchel's like, I'm like his, or Dallas Keuchel said he's like a little brother to him. And McCullers says, when I was coming up through the Astro system, he really helped me. And so that'll be cool to see that. No, we're not going to trade Pena. That's ridiculous. He's a top one of the top three rookies in the league. Don't say that, okay? Um, McCormick could be a, a trade piece down the road, but you're not going to trade McCormick or Myers right now unless they get a big-name center fielder, which I don't know that they will. At the, at the end of the day, you got the guys you got. They're going to add one more piece, I bet, and we'll be fine. Yeah, so I know that uh, earlier in the day, uh, Crane said that they, they're they still going to be active. And then James Click kind of came out and said the same thing. He said that we have a few more irons in the fire. One of them was obviously Will Smith. A few more things we're trying to chase down, but we're not done by any means. And uh, he said our focus is to try to put ourselves in the best position that we can to compete for a World Series this year. And uh, he was already he was talking about the move for Christian Vasquez and also um, Trey Mancini. But he also talking about the catching situation. Uh, he said that uh, he wants to talk to Dusty about uh, Martin Maldonado and saying uh, that he he knows that Maldonado has been uh, carrying the um, the majority of the catching, but he uh, he brought in. Vasquez to kind of take a, a big chunk of the workload. So um, we, so who knows? Cause uh, I, I have a quote from what um, Dusty Baker said. He said, I haven't really figured that out yet. Martin is like directing our team, directing our pitching staff. I'm going to use both of them. I've got two heck of catchers. He can, uh, he can pinch hit for Maldi pitch run for Maldi. And then Channa Rome kind of said, if you read between the lines, that means that Malnado is still going to be your starting catcher. Uh, but it, I don't think that James Click traded two of these highly regarded prospects. We need to talk about them in a second for a backup catcher and, and who could be your everyday catcher. So uh, we'll see what that happens. But I've been telling y'all that whoever they trade for is going to be in Dusty Baker's mind is going to be a backup catcher because he loves what Martin Maldonado brings to his team. Well, the club, again, the club will allow him to get his numbers, number of starts, those 13 games. I don't know how many exact games there are left in the season, um, but at the end of the day, he is your primary catcher, yes. Vasquez is a rental. He's going to fit in the clubhouse where he wants to. He's a professional. 
He was shocked. I thought it was a little odd that they asked him. Um, he, okay, he was taking batting practice, and people were taking pictures of him swinging, and they were like, MLB just reported that he was traded. He doesn't even know yet. And then Berman hit him with the uppercut going, hey, uh, you were just traded the Reds, uh, you know, the Astros. Did you know that? And he's like, uh, yeah. And, and he, he was stone-faced. He was like, what do you think? He's like, oh, it's a business. It's like, get the guy a chance to talk to his family, right? Like, give him a chance to call his wife and say, hey, uh, guess what? We're moving to Houston. I mean, that's huge. It's not like in the clubhouse. Okay, he goes from one clubhouse to another. They didn't even have, Eric, enough Space City jerseys to print a jersey to put him in, to put him in the game. ESPN was reporting during the game. Kirchin and all those guys were like the Astros didn't even have any extra Space City jerseys. So for him to wear and and like and like if really if he wanted to yes uh, that that, that, is, that okay. is what yeah that is what they said and um Eduardo Perez goes he goes I've walked through the concourse and they have plenty of those Space City jerseys in there <laughs> just he go goes, buy he one go get one just go buy one and add the numbers he goes <laughs> he said that would be hilarious but he goes he goes that is odd and I yeah. said well I'm thinking they probably weren't planning on bringing a guy in that was right there because this thing and these trades seems like they evolved over time. They, they changed and they're very uh, fluid. They're very organic. They just kind of are created boom. And they're there and you're like, Oh, this looks good. So, you know, um, I think it's a good trade. I think they're good trades. And I think the Astros in the end of the day will be better for it. So the Astros ended up trading for Christian Vasquez. They traded their 28th rank prospect, uh, Valdez, and uh, Brayu, which is their 29th prospect. And these are guys that are both having great season, both had high slugging percentages. I've seen videos of uh, one of them. I want to say it was Valdez. I think his name is Emmanuel, but he was crushing uh, home runs over like um, out of the ballpark, like uh, out of the stadium too. And uh, Baseball America had Manuel Valdez uh, as the 12th uh, ranked Astros prospect. So this is going to be, this is a big loss for the well, Astros, so, but at the same time they needed to upgrade at the catching position. So I saw the 28th and the 29th ranked prospects is what I saw from another one. Of course, the That's sites MLB all pipeline. Rank them yeah. Okay, MLB pipeline. Um, I've seen both of these guys play in person. Absolute beast at the plate. But apparently, so with the Rule 5 draft coming up, they were Rule 5 eligible, meaning you would have lost them. Apparently, there are other players that the Astros want to protect in the Rule 5 other than these guys that they value more highly. Otherwise, they would have gotten somebody else and sent right. them along the way. Some people are saying, oh, it's, it's a heavy loss. And I said that at first. And then I started looking into it. It's really not because I don't think that either one of these guys was going to see the major league roster this next year. There's just too much of a log jam. And if you have assets that you're going to lose to a Rule 5 draft, you might as well get something for them. Why not? Yeah, I agree with you. So I think uh, for the most part, this was a great uh, day for the Houston Astros. They've upgraded three of their weaknesses. And uh, are they done? Who knows? Uh, they, they could be looking for a center fielder, like you said. I don't know if they're going to go out and trade for any more pitching. I just don't see a great need for it. Now, it would be interesting to see what type of impact bat um that they can go get i know that uh, there's been kind of some rumbling some uh about maybe going get a big bat i don't know if that's possible but <laughs> we'll see if that's possible but I, I just i just don't see who's out there who the astros go get and no oh. please stop mentioning joey gallo we have no interest in Joey. No, Gallo. Joey. Joey Gallo is a big zero. That guy. I'm sorry. He deserves to be in a beer softball league, hitting home runs with those guys. You know how they tore like major league stadiums and just crush the yellow softballs into the stands. That's what Joey Gallo needs to be doing. No offense. Now I could never do what he does. I could never get in the box with a major league pitcher and even compete. But at the end of the day, Joey Gallo needs to go back to Arlington where he belongs to Tough Shed Stadium in that horrible McMahon Park 2.0. And just go play there. Just, I mean, they love him there. Bryce Pratterick at Locked On Rangers loves that guy, and he calls him his son. So I think maybe, maybe he needs to go back to Arlington because the big lights weren't 
weren't good for him. And, you know, that's what's weird about Joey Gallo. Guys like him. Guys like, remember Chris Carter. These guys that are these big home run guys, even Ryan Howard. Now, Ryan Howard was a much better hitter historically. But if Ryan Howard could cut his strikeouts by like a third, that dude's definitely in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. But he's just a big swing and miss guy, and we are not getting Joey Gallo. Why would you get – y'all are complaining about Pena and saying trade him. Joey Gallo strikes out 10 times more than than Jeremy Pena, right? Yeah, for sure. And so, yeah, I, I don't see that happening. And so we'll see what happens there. I, I don't see that trade happening. I to, Oh, yeah, I was going to say that James Click mentioned that uh, Mancini can play the corner outfield. So he did say first base as well, but he did mention that um, it's up to Dusty um, when it comes down to it. But he did mention that Mancini can play the corner outfield position. So maybe he, he will be playing left field until Michael Brantley comes back, if Michael Brantley comes back. Uh, so that means Yuli Gurriel could still be playing some first base. Uh, we'll see, but uh, this uh, means they could still go out and get Josh Bell. Do they have enough um, ammunition to go out and get Josh Bell? I know the Nationals are probably, they probably know exactly who they want from the Houston Astros. It's a matter of do the Astros want to give give up that player or those players for another I'm- rental? I'm going to go out on the limb and I'm going to say that the Astros get a deal done. If you're listening to this on the next day and they've done it, you can say, wow, this guy's a prophet. I believe they're going to go out and get a bat tomorrow. Before the trade deadline is up, they're going to add a bat. So mark my words. You can tell me on Twitter if I'm right or if I'm wrong. You don't get anything if I'm wrong. But if I'm right, I just get a good attaboy pat on the back. But I'm pretty sure they've got to go out and get another bat. I, I don't see how they don't do that. I think Mancini's a great bat. I think Vasquez plays well against the Yankees. He hits well against the Yankees. And everyone's like freaking out about Montas going with the going with the Yankees. It's one pitcher. Okay. But they he pitches Garrett well Cole. against the Astros. He does pitch well against the Astros. That's one game though. He's not he doesn't hit. He I mean, he he pitches, okay. If he pitches and, one and six, then that's gonna be two wins for the the Yankees. No, Garrett Cole's <laughs> going to pitch one and six, and we can and absolutely then, handle yeah. that guy. So, you know, at, at the end of the day, we don't know a thing about what exactly is going to happen in the future. What I do know is Astros fans asked for James Click to be active. You need to be happy with what he's doing. You have to trust what he's doing. When he gets a big bat, you can thank me. Now, if he doesn't, we come back on the show tomorrow night, you can say, hey, I told you so. But I believe we're going to go out and get a bat. The analytics uh, nerds say that if uh, Mancini played his entire season uh, at Min Maid Park, he would have 17 home runs instead of 10. So he, him playing at Min Maid Park could impact. He could hit a whole bit, a lot more home runs because they did move the the walls back and they moved it up um, yeah. higher. So you can reason. take, yeah, you can take a spray chart and you can do somehow you right. can do an overlay of the spray chart over Minute Maid. And he's got a ton more hits, not in not just those seven home runs. I'm just saying. Right. So trust the process. Trust the process. Yes. And so Mancini will wear number 16 with the Astros and Vesquez will wear number seven if they can find a jersey for him, which I'm sure they'll be able to do at some point. But overall, um, it's it's good to see the Astros doing that. Uh, all the other teams are going out there and making their moves. I know uh, we're still waiting to see where Juan Soto goes. I think that would be the the big domino to fall once Juan Soto goes somewhere. I think you're going to see all the other moves go. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. I know the Dodgers are thinking that they need to get over their the Dodgers. World Series and they need to get uh, another bat to help them beat the Astros in the World Series. So they need Juan Soto. So they're probably going to throw all their uh, trade trips in there. So we'll, well see what happens. Wait. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's the Dodgers Wait, and hold on. the Cardinals. Is that right? What? Wait, anyway, that is right. right. Oh, I, I take about? that back. I take that back. I take that back. Both. Sorry, I will. I repeat that. I will change that. Both will have to change numbers. Mancini was six and Vasquez was seven. So Biggio was seven. I don't know why I was even thinking about that. So both of them will have to change numbers. Yes, they will. Yeah, they will. They will definitely be changing their numbers. Yeah, um, sorry. I didn't even think about that. So. 
Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize you got it wrong. I wonder why people were talking about BGO being number seven. I was like, wait, why are they talking yeah. about number seven being retired? My, I, like I said, this is our fifth podcast in 24 hours, so <laughs> bear with us. <laughs> well, so so I'm just saying, let's just let's just let's just imagine for a moment, okay? This is called not so reality TV. Juan Soto, if I told you Juan Soto signed with the Astros. You know why I would love that? I wouldn't even care about the repercussions. I just want to hear the weeping and gnashing of teeth and the rioting, the sheer panic and anger and angst in the voices of the opposing teams and opposing fans' voices when Juan Soto chose Houston, Texas over the Padres, the Dodgers, and the Cardinals. I just want it to happen just to see other people just go absolutely bananas. I'm sorry. I'm I am so tired of the vitriol. And I'm so tired of the 2017 bull crap that I want to do something and go, yeah, you know what? Karma's, you know what? And I I would I would love that. Now, I don't know that I can handle the asking price. I know. I know it's, it's a big ask. It's not going to happen, just, guys. We're just pipe dreaming no, here. I just said that. Yeah. I just led this with that. I know. So, I'm just saying at the end of the day, it would be absolutely 100% entertaining to see that happen, even if it was for a moment. You know, you could snap your fingers and go back in a regular time, but I would love to go to an alternate universe to where that happens just to see the freaking reactions. It would be priceless. It would be absolutely priceless. All right. It's been official that Corey Lee has been sent down to AAA. And oh, wow. uh, he was asked if it's um, if it makes him hungrier to get back here. He said, absolutely, it's humbling uh, and uh, it's humbled you and you want to get back to work and obviously keep on working to get back up here. And so Corey Lee, he's got a bright future with the Houston Astros and I'm not worried about everything. And uh, Martin Maldonado says he knows that Christian, Christian Vasquez is really good says they used to work together and have a really good friendship. So uh, hopefully they're able to, um, to work with that. And um, so they used to play winter ball together. So uh, they have a good relationship there. So hopefully they can kind of manage the whole playing time. It won't be a whole Ken Giles and uh, who was it? Ken Gregerson? No, Luke Gregerson, the whole closer. Luke Gregerson. Yeah. Luke Gregerson. Yeah. No, so here's the thing. Will Smith has a history of a ton of saves, of a 12 to 14 strikeouts per nine. He only has 9.9 strikeouts per nine this year. He's got a history of being good. The Astros will get him back to that. Will Smith, a lefty back-end guy, will be huge for this team. There's your lefty reliever. We're waiting for the bat to show up. So tomorrow, hopefully, we don't have to do too many, but I wouldn't mind doing another emergency podcast to talk about a big bat coming to Houston. Thank y'all for tuning in to us. Thank thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for interacting with us. Thank you for your questions. And if I'm wrong tomorrow, prove it to me. If I'm not, pat me on the back and tell me I told you so. Uh, wrong about what? Wrong about the big bat. I oh, said okay. I predicted a big okay. bat. I, I mean, I'm, I'm convinced of it. Okay. I'm going to sleep easy tonight knowing that the Astros are going to get a big bat. I just am. I just, I'm, I just feel it in my bones. Alrighty. So I know that uh, Will Smith has a good spin rate and that kid, the Astros picked up from the Rays, also has a good uh, spin rate. I can't remember his name. I think his last name was Murphy, at the, um, but I closed that out. Um, but he has a good spin rate as well. So the Astros know what they like and that's one of their targets. So the Astros have made three, three additions at the trade deadline that's what I predicted they would make. Would they make a fourth one? Who knows? Uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm excited to see what happens. Uh, I James Click said there's several more things on the uh, so, several more irons on the fire, and uh, even Crane said there's several trades that can happen earlier in the day. So who knows what can happen? Something somebody else can fall into Astros' laps. Another hitter. I doubt they look for a, um, another reliever because I think the Astros bullpen is one of the best in baseball. Dusty likes a lefty reliever. They got their, their lefty reliever who doesn't slap Chris Rock. And uh, they I think they're done with the pitching staff. 
But now they just need to go out there and maybe get one more hitter, and we'll see what keep, happens. Keep my Astros out your dang mouth. <laughs> keep my trash cans out of your dang mouth. Yeah. Oh, hey. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's wrap it up before we go too far into that. Yes, number seven is retired. We I know. It, it was a mistake. I misread that, and I'm tired, <laughs> and it's been a long day. So, anyway, that's all we got for this edition of the Lock on Astros podcast, and we will be back tomorrow talking about more trades or no more trades, and we'll give um, – the Astros some grades on all the trades they've made. So um, my name is Eric Heisman. He is Brett H. Town Wheelhouse. We are the Locked on Astros podcast and uh, Ghost Rose, and we're going to get some sleep. <laughs> Night.